So you know that it's not a bad thing to say, I'm not a good person. It's not a bad thing to say that. And the reason why is because if you're saying that from a sincere heart, if you are saying that from the place where your soul is really crying out for change and for transformation, God sees that. That's a step towards God when you can say to yourself, I'm not a good person. I do bad things. I think about things that I shouldn't. I've done things that I shouldn't. I still do things that I shouldn't. And I know that I don't want to do these things, but I just have this propensity to do these things. And I find myself thinking about it, and then I find myself doing these things. And I just don't have the power or the strength to stop. When you start to speak out loud about these kind of matters. And I'm not talking about going to some counselor, some person that has some natural intellect that they've learned through secular institutions. I'm not talking about going to find a Christian counselor, a person that's learned the demonic origins of Greek, Greek psychology people and philosophers, and they are going to incorporate that to how they're going to help you and they're going to treat you like some type of case study instead of treating you like a person that needs Jesus and giving you Jesus but they're going to give you a intellectual and psychological approach and solution I'm talking about actually crying out to God telling God that you're a bad person. And as you begin to realize what those bad things are, expressing that to God. God said that when we, when we come to him and we repent and we sincerely do, do so with the desire to change and be transformed and delivered, he says that he is faithful and he is just to forgive us. And that's the wonderful thing about God. See, in the world, you can be this great person. You can do all of these great things and make everybody happy, put a smile on everybody's face, satisfy everybody's needs. And then you can do one wrong thing. And now you are, now they're going to attach that one horrible thing to you. And you may never be able to live that down. They're going to constantly see you and see those things or that thing that you did. But Jesus says that he can forgive you. He says that he will blot out your sins and he will give you a refreshing in his presence. Meaning that he will, he will wipe your slate clean. He'll give you a new mind. He'll give you his mind. He'll fill you with his spirit and make you spiritually minded so that you can think about life and, and you can have a mind that's full of life and peace. A mind that's constantly thinking about the life you want to live for him. A mind that constantly is, is focused on peace. You want to follow peace. Follow that peace with all men and holiness. Because we can't see God unless we are made holy. And that's why Jesus said, be ye holy. Be holy. And Jesus can make you that. But acknowledging that you do bad things, not being afraid to be vulnerable before God. You know, as men, we are taught to, to go inward. We are taught to not be emotional. If a man cries or shows that, his, that he's overwhelmed, then he looks weak. You, you, you're, you're classified as emotional if you cry or you show any sign of weakness. So we're taught to be around each other. We're taught to go out into life and to look strong to present our, present ourselves as having it all together but inside we're breaking down when we go into the our private sector our private home that's when 
we really are what we don't want the world or we don't want people to see. But God sees that. And those are the moments when you really can seek God's face so that you can hear his voice, so that he can breathe on you and, and, and take you from the place of death. Because you, yes, you may be dead in those trespasses and sins, but Jesus can quicken you by his, by his spirit. You become a person that lives by your spirit as the spirit of God lives by you. His spirit bears witness with your spirit and he makes you a son of God as you become one with him. And that's the life that he's calling you into. But the, the chosen part comes on your end. The chosen part comes with you actually deciding to meet Jesus and to come closer to him and to let him have you, to let him have your life. It's not enough to just give him your things. It's not enough to just give him your mouth or you know, say things out of your mouth. It's not enough to just want to read books about, about the Bible. People would rather read a book about something a person read than to read about the actual people that knew God and were blessed by God and were empowered by God to live for him in such a way that he was glorified through their lives. We'd rather read about people that we see now. And a lot of these people are not faithful to Jesus. A lot of these people don't love Jesus. We need to desire change. Most of us would rather just say, stay the same with just more stuff. We would rather just stay the same with more money. Stay the same with a bigger house. Stay the same with a bigger car. Stay the same with more influence and more tension. But Jesus wants us to change. The real war that's going on within our members, the real war is going on within. But if we can never be honest about what's going in, what's going on in here, outward, to the people who, to, to the, 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 the true men and women of God who have the power to bring the change, then we're never going to experience the change, the freedom, the peace, the healing, and we're never going to get the wisdom, the understanding, and, and we're never going to truly be able to live by faith and not by what we see. So living by faith takes an entering into the spirit. You have to be baptized in the Holy Ghost to, to live in that way. And that's available. If Jesus has accepted you, and if Jesus accepts your true, sincere repentance, you have a repentant heart, meaning that you understand that your life needs to be consistent with trying to seek Jesus and trying to obey Jesus and love Jesus and submit to Jesus. And you're going to find yourself where you need to be. But if you continue to hide and continue to cover up how you feel with your work, with jobs and with relationships and with buying, acquiring things and taking vacations and just ignoring what's really going on on the inside, then you're going to find yourself unequipped and unprepared. Jesus wants all to come to repentance. He does not want any of us to perish. So let's be transparent with God about who we are and what we really think and what we really feel. And ask him and desire him and seek him for change so that we can truly be holy in this, so that we can truly have a heart that truly desires to be righteous and to please him in every way.